So the particle systems that I've created here are all based on the same effect and that effect is the CC particle systems 2. Now this is just a really simple kind of a, a mock-up of how you could create some special effects using a, a single particle system but give it very very different attributes and make it look like very different things so the the idea here is that the fire starts up there's plenty of smoke and flames and then in comes the rain puts the fire out okay so all of this is created simply from uh, using the CC particle systems too with some basic modifications of the properties now there there's been no other uh, animated elements added to this uh, or any other effects. This is just down to playing around with the properties over time of the, the actual particle system. So I'll quickly go through again how you would create a particle system. Now particle systems need to be added to a layer so whenever you need to add something to a layer um, it's done through the through adding a solid to your timeline. Now the color is irrelevant here because the color, the solid will vanish as soon as you add the particle system. Uh, I'm going to just call this uh, simple particles and I'm going to use this to demonstrate uh, particles. Okay, right, the particle systems that I'm going to show you are uh, foam and CC particle systems too. So I'll put in CC part and particle systems pops up. So I just drag that across onto the solid and you see this uh, default looking kind of spout of sparks it looks like. So this is your default uh, particle systems too with no modifications made to it. Uh, you can see that the solid has disappeared and it's just left the particle system. The particle system can be uh, adapted over here in the effects and controls or you can toggle open down here if you want to do more timeline based stuff you can open up the same set of parameters down here and you can also look at your timeline and keyframe them and so on. The particle systems are made up of a few elements. You have the producer, you have the particle, and then you have the environment. And the environment is controlled generally through things like physics. Uh, for particle systems too, the producer is the central point here. Uh, I can click that, click and drag that around to move the particle system, or I can keyframe that uh, in time to make it uh, look as if it's a kind of a comet. So we looked at that in last Friday's class. Now the particle system can be, or the producer, uh, can have its shape and size adjusted as well as being moved. So I'll just go for rain here first. So what I'll do is I'll uh, width widen the, the producer so that it spans the entire width of the composition. I can decrease the Y. It's not going to make a massive amount of difference. It was only three pixels. And if I wanted to, I can push that up now off screen. So it's going some way towards the effect of rain here even though it's still all kind of spraying off it's more like a sprinkler system than actual rain so I'll move on to the the longevity and if I want to shorten the amount of time that that particle is alive then it will just be visible at the top if I lengthen it then it will be much thicker and visible all the way to the bottom so I'll leave it as it was it's fine for what I was looking for now the particle can be left as a line. A line is fine for what I want because it's rain, but I could change that to um, a shaded sphere, which is what I'll be using when I create fire and smoke. You can create more decorative effects such as sparkles, uh, more graphic effects, I suppose, and then you have these um, cubes and things like that that you can play around with as well if you can find a use for a cube. Um, leave it a line. Now, the Particle can have its color changed, so I will do that now. I'll make it white and I'll make it turn blue as it goes across its lifespan. So it'll start off white and it'll end up a kind of a, a cyan color. Or I can make it a little bit darker. Click OK. And now you can see it's white at the top and then it gets darker towards the bottom. Now, uh, its default transfer mode is just set to composite. If you want it to brighten as it um, interacts with itself, uh, as it moves across the screen, you can set it to screen or add. Add will brighten it where the pixel values overlap. So where one particle crosses on top of another particle, it will do an add operation or an add composite, add the RGB values and give the result as a brighter color and oftentimes a different color. Um, 
the last thing that you'll change here are the physics. Now the physics um, span a lot of different properties here. So the actual animation itself starts in a particular way. So the producer will emit these particles in a particular way from the outset and that is um, set here in the animation settings. So explosive is the default. You can change that to um, vortex. If I bring that down there and decrease the X you'll see exactly what that vortex is doing. So it's kind of a tornado shape. Uh, fire will invert the particle system and have it just going upwards uh, in a very tight fashion from the producer and we'll be using that in a moment. I'm going to leave it at explosive. Actually no, I'll undo back to the point where everything was working. Okay, uh, sorry that's vortex, it should be ex explosive. Now the velocity is the speed at which the rain leaves the particle producer and that will give me faster rain but it will just basically spray out uh, in the direction that it was going in a faster manner. If I want to make the rain go straight down then I have to start playing around with things like gravity. So if I increase the gravity you'll see that the rain is now oops, that's not gravity going in a more straight down fashion. Now it has also kind of elongated these um, raindrops so what I can do is I can kind of uh, counteract that by increasing the resistance. So the resistance for the particle systems too is the air. So how resistant is the air? How thick is the air? And um, how much will it slow down the rain as the rain tries to fall? So by using a combination of gravity and resistance and velocity then I can start to build up more of a kind of a rain effect. Okay, so that's the rain. Now, what I'll do is I'll just call this rain2 and quickly move on to creating some fire. So I create a solid, call it fire2 and drag on that particle system. Now, it's already possibly set up with the right colors for fire. Maybe that's what this is used the most for. Uh, it's certainly a handy way to create quick fire. So uh, I'm going to leave it at yellow to red uh, if I wanted to kind of create more um, more of a kind of a, a gas kind of a flame that I could go white to blue but I, I won't I'll leave it at yellow to red. Now it's very simple so all I really need to change here is the direction fire needs to go upwards from the point so I'll change it from uh, the physics from explosive to fire I'll pull the particle system down a little bit. I'll change the particle type from line to faded sphere or sorry, yeah, faded sphere. And then it's just a case of really tweaking the properties and visually assessing the result. So uh, in this case I can um, just play it to see how it looks. So I'll probably need more more of those happening. Make it a little bit thicker. I can increase the resistance uh, maybe take down the birth rate again. Go up to the producer, increase the X to make it a little bit wider. Now, particle size. I want it to start off big and end up small, more like a flame. It's already starting to look more like fire. Now, what I could do at this stage is decrease the, the uh, or increase the gravity and the velocity, and take down the resistance a little bit. Now, what you can also do with these particle systems is to create more than one particle system and have them kind of interact with each other in a way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, change the birth color to a darker kind of an orange and change the death color to I suppose a darker red. And I'll duplicate the top one there and set its blend mode 
to add. And what I can do then is I can start playing around with the individual uh, effects in terms of the, the velocity and all of the other types of things just to get two, two different um, particle systems working and interacting with each other. You can also offset them then if you wanted to as well just to make sure that you have two very different kind of things going on. And once you've got those done you can then start kind of tweaking them using other methods I suppose you can you can decrease the uh, the width of the fire to make it look like it's more kind of shooting upwards um, I'll bring that in as well so this is looking like a kind of a raging inferno at the moment now another last thing that I actually didn't do in the previous one but which can also create some nice effects um, is to uh, get a, a wire mesh I can find it now. Mesh warp, that's it. And the mesh warp will allow you to um, pull the fire around like that, just as you would uh, in Photoshop or something like that. Now, the real strength or power of using the mesh warp isn't just warping it once, because you'll see you just get a kind of a, a weird distorted effect. But if you can, if you animate the um, the, or if you keyframe that warping then you can make the flames look as if they're kind of moving off and around and going up in that kind of circular fashion that you often see uh, in real flames and animated frames. So if you have these kind of moving around, I'll just kill that for the moment and um, go back to my flame. Now, it's not perfect. I could play around with it a little bit longer. Now, if I then want to create some smoke, I don't need to start from scratch and do all of this all over again. All I need to do is copy and paste one of those uh, flame layers, turn it into a smoke layer, and change the color from a fire color to a smoke color. And then it's all about just getting the, the, the longevity gravity, all of these things. I'm playing around with them like that. Now you could also um, increase the birth size of your smoke. Uh, I might even take the color down a bit, make it more smoke-like and less, a little bit darker. And you might pull it out a bit so that the smoke kind of emanates from the side of the, the source of the fire as well. So now I have my smoke, I have my uh, my rain, and it's just a case of getting them to interact with each other. So I'll push the rain up to the top layer. Okay, so I've got fire one and fire two, so I might just pre-comp these and see if that doesn't give me any weird results. Uh, call it fire. Um, actually, no, I won't. I won't. So I want the rain to come down roughly here. So I'll go back into my rain effect and keyframe the birth rate. Backtrack, do a little of a, a bit of a back time animation here and bring the birth rate down to zero so that it they start to be born here and then as more are born then you get into the full birth rate. Now when that happens I need the fire to go out and then I need the smoke to go out. So that's just a case of doing the reverse uh, with these two. So I go to the birth rate here and here. bring that down to zero. And then let the smoke go down a little bit later on. So 
So you actually get a nice effect there if I turn off the rain, where when the smoke, the last of the, the smoke particles is born, the particle system continues, the previous particles that were born continue off on their own uh, direction. So you actually get a very realistic kind of effect of the waft or the whatever the wisps of smoke continuing on up the screen. Okay, uh, I suppose the only other thing really of importance with this particular effect is that you can have the fire kind of leap in flames if you um, play around with or keyframe the birth rate of those flames. So if you have a full on fire with, you know, um, five um, flames or particle, flame particles per second, and then you cut that back to zero and then bring it right back up to uh, five particles per second, then it's going to have the effect of the, the fire stopping and then starting again, and you'll get that flame that kind of leaps up into the air. Okay, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, switch these back on. Now, this is the one that I created previously so you can see that it's pretty much just the flames are a little bit more realistic because I've played around with the birth rate so you can see how they're kind of the flames are leaping up off the the base and then the rain comes down